Porsche, a name now synonymous with high-performance sports cars and motorsports excellence, had humble beginnings in the 1950s. While they were still a small manufacturer compared to the giants of Ferrari and Mercedes, Porsche was gradually building a reputation for the legendary 550 and 718 race cars. By the 1960s, they had moved up the ranks in sports car racing, but the prestigious 24-hour of Le Mans had remained elusive. Yet Porsche persevered, laying the groundwork for a motorsport legend. In 1967, Porsche finished fifth at Le Mans in their 907 prototype and the motorsports world was about to witness a significant change. The Commission Sportive Internationale, then independent from the FIA, introduced a controversial regulation shift. They limited the engine displacement of Group 6 to 3 litres for four years from 1968 to 1971 to control the speed of the prototypes and encourage Formula 1 engine manufacturers to enter endurance racing. However, to cushion the blow for car makers affected by this rule, Group 4 sports cars were allowed to use engines up to 5 litres. The catch? These cars had to be street legal, produced in a minimum quantity, initially 50, later reduced to 25, and feature everyday amenities like a turnkey, ignition, passenger seat, spare tyre and luggage space. Porsche's response was nothing short of remarkable. They improved their existing 907 Group 6 prototype and fitted it with a new 3 litre flat 8 engine. In 1968, despite their best efforts, they could only manage a second place finish at Le Mans, as the GT40 Mark 1, exploiting the Group 4 loophole, secured the victory. The defeat stung Porsche deeply. A mere month after the race, Ferdinand Pietsch, Porsche's motorsport chief, embarked on a mission to emulate the success of the GT40. Porsche's engineers, led by renowned Hans Mesker, faced a daunting task, build a flat 12 engine, which was completely new territory for the company. Incredibly, they achieved this in just six months. Mesker ingeniously fused two existing six-cylinder blocks and devised a central gearing mechanism to harness power from the crankshaft's middle, reducing vibrations. With the use of exotic materials like titanium and magnesium, they birthed a 4.5 litre powerhouse, churning out around 550 horsepower. In an era transitioning to aluminum monocoque chassis, Porsche took a different path, opting for a lightweight space frame chassis. The aluminium tubes were meticulously welded and prematurely pressurized for crack detection. This innovative chassis weighed a mere 105 pounds and was paired with a low drag fiberglass body, bonded to the space frame for added rigidity. To exploit the Group 4 loophole, the body featured a turnkey ignition, a small passenger seat, a space saver tyre and a hidden luggage compartment beneath the rear spoiler. Mind you, although the 917 was technically road legal, this car was never designed to be on the road. This was a fully fledged race car. Now Porsche managed an astonishing feat, building 25 of the new 917s in just 10 months, a month ahead of the homologation deadline for the 1969 season. The 917 was an engineering marvel, boasting incredible power, lightweight construction and superb braking capabilities. However, it was also known for its instability at high speeds, earning the notorious nickname Widowmaker. After a challenging debut at Le Mans in 1969, the 917 LH surprisingly won in Austria. Porsche convinced John Weyer, the mind behind the GT40 success, to join their ranks and under Weyer's guidance, the 917 underwent a complete overhaul. A new short tail version, the 917K, emerged with improved aerodynamics. In 1970, the 917K made its presence felt with the victory at the 24 hour of Daytona, followed by wins in six of the next nine races, and this included the 24 hour of Le Mans. Porsche cleansed the World Sports Car Championship title and secured another Le Mans victory in 1971. With a bored out 4.9 litre engine and aerodynamic enhancements, the 917K achieved unprecedented feats. The number 22 car set records for speed and distance that endured for decades, only being surpassed in 2010. Now for those not heavily into racing, let me just tell you that that record was insane. 
Now, Porsche retired the 917K from the World Sports Car Championship after the 1971 season, marking the end of an extraordinary era. However, a modified open-top variant equipped with a twin-turbo flat-12 engine dominated the American Can-Am series, claiming the championship in 1972. Now, I made two videos on Porsche's dominance in the Can-Am series. One video is about how Porsche built a flat-16 engine to compete, and the other is on, well, the most insane Porsche race car ever. So if you enjoyed today's video, you would love those. I mean, the one video is on the successor of the 917, the 917-30, which raced with a twin-turbo flat-12 engine that produced a staggering 1580 horsepower. But let's end today's video off. The Porsche 917, even 55 years after its debut, remains an icon in motorsport history. Its development paved the way for Porsche's ascension as the most successful manufacturer in endurance racing. It's a testament to innovation, determination and engineering excellence. The 917 is not just a car, it's a symbol of unyielding commitment to victory on the racetrack, an enduring legend in the world of motorsports. But at the end of the video, please let me know what you thought of the video and what you think of this awesome car. Let me know and if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.